gathered to crown just its second ever world champion. No sport may have grown around the world faster in the last 365 days than the World Knife Throwing League. More accurate than ever, more strategic than ever, and more mentally prepared than ever, the best of the best know it will take their sharpest performance to be the title winner in 2022. Downtown Appleton, Wisconsin, site of this World Championship of Knife Throwing. It has been a fantastic weekend leading up to crowning a champion today. Hi, everybody, with Evan Walters and Mike Kump. I'm Will Haskins. So glad you could be along for the show today. we got the commissioner right here. This sport, I'm telling you what, in two years has absolutely rocketed. The skill level we will see on hand today is sensational how it's grown. Yeah, I mean, just in the past year and a half, we've seen we've gone from a few hundred competitors in one country to multiple countries and thousands of competitors. And the fact that they're here today just shows how far they've come. Including this guy right here who made it to the quarterfinals. You're going to be doing a little bit of both today. Here, Mike, you've won at the highest levels of axe throwing. What has the transition been like to be as good as these guys here today throwing knives? Uh, well, we might find out. It might be one and done, or maybe I'm in it for the long run. Uh, it's been a hard adjustment. Let's see how it plays. Let's take a look at the bracket, the quarterfinals coming up. There are some big names in the sport, including the very first U.S. Open champion. Yeah, but Mike's going to play in Travis Blank in the first round. But what do you like about the bracket? Honestly, it's it's got a wide spread. There are a lot of upsets in this, uh, well, maybe not upsets, but surprises that we've seen this weekend uh, leading up to this. So we're going to see a lot of new faces and a few old, and uh, I think it's a good spread to see. You going to bet your, on yourself, or you got a horse in this one? Uh, not me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've got a feeling, though. We'll see what happens. Quarterfinals coming up next. We'll skate right into them with you right after this. Let's take a closer look at the specifications of the knives being used in the World Knife Throwing League. All WKTL knives are a maximum length of 16 inches, but they can be as short as 13 and a half inches. The length determines how it rotates in the air. Maximum width of the cheek of the blade is 3.5 inches, but currently the widest knife is just 2.2 inches. The guard width of the knives must be a minimum of 4 inches across. This helps with safety in the sport of knife throwing, while the handle length can be a maximum of 7 inches from the pommel to the knife to the guard. The max weight of any knife in the league is 1.65 pounds. This allows for easier penetration into the wood with a heavier weight. Throwing League is brought to you by the Fox Cities Convention and Visitors Bureau. For more information, visit foxcities.org. For those familiar with axe throwing, the scoring for knife throwing is very similar. One point for the outer circle, all the way down to six points for the red bullseye in the middle. Kill shots can be called twice during a 10 throw match, but the big difference in knife throwing, even though the scoring is the same, multiple knives on the board at one time, how much do you risk going for that center circle? First of four quarterfinals, Mike Kump comes out of the broadcast booth and into the lion's den to face maybe the most experienced thrower of them all in Travis Blank. Let's meet them both. You may remember me from being a has-been many years ago. Second place in the Canadian Open 2019, first place in the U.S. Open 2019, second place in the World's 2020, 2019 Waddle Duels champion, and forever most overrated axe thrower in the sport. Who am I doing this for? None other than my mother. Hi, Mom. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Travis Blank. I'm from Pierce, Nebraska. I'm currently representing Ironside Axe Club out of Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I've been throwing knives for about two and a half years now. Um, my, my most notable win was the first ever U.S. Open WKTL win. Um, and I'm doing this to prove to my kids uh, that you can achieve anything in life if you put effort into it.
right, first three throws are on the board already here, Evan, between Mike Kump and Travis Blank. And what has made this sport so exciting in its growth is sort of the volatility of scoring, this, the strategy that is employed, especially in these early throws where it's easy to board how much these guys try to attack that bullseye without a knife dropping. Yeah, when you have uh, three knives on the board, you have to maneuver around your own scoring. So it's, uh, it's pretty difficult, but luckily they're at the 10-foot line starting out. distance away, so they're going to be doing a double rotation. The difficulty is going to increase even more. As they switch sides and go from deep. Traditional sportsman play of tapping the knives. They got five more throws. But they're just going to do three before they retrieve. So far in this sport, we have not had anyone do a perfect game yet, which means all bullseyes and two of those kill shots in the top corners. The highest we've seen at this tournament so far is 50, 55 points. But to get a perfect game, we need 60 Five, four, four. So one point gain by Travis Blank in throws oh, six, seven, no eight, way. and it is all time. A bit of confusion there on the score. It should be Mike Kump is two down, and that is indeed the case going these final two. And so the question then becomes: Everybody's ready to try and go up here, but kill shots from this distance, Evan, are so tricky. We've seen Travis Blank more than almost any competitor go for kill shots in the preliminary rounds to get here. But Mike Kump going to try and value that bullseye. Looks like a, maybe a five from Travis Blank. So a chance here, maybe. It might come to draw you. Solid. It looks like it might be right. Oh. Oh. That's way too low for him. So game one to Travis Blank. fact that you just can't put the time into it like you used to be able to. Yeah, there's a, a, it, the World Knife Throwing League is still pretty much in its infancy, but even still, it's been growing so rapidly. And, and like you said, Travis Blank has been here pretty much since the beginning. So he uh, taken the US Open Almost took the US Open this year, but he's still back. Mike Kump begins with a one-point edge after three throws here at game number two. Kump, who was a U.S. Open champion in Hatchet, also has a duals major in axe throwing and has transitioned into the world of knife throwing. Trying to, he knew it was a tough draw. Blank here in the first one, who starts with a bullseye on throw number four. Travis Blank's throwing the World Knife Throwing League Barbarian Knives. He customized himself, and his daughter was actually the one that put the designs into that knife for him. So he's throwing those for her. Six, six. And we're tied up. Stepping back to the back line. With Blank already one game in his back pocket. And two rotations of the blade from this back line. There's just so much more that can go wrong from back here. I mean, Blank won that U.S. Open in 2021. I mean, it was a sport where if you just boarded all 10 knives, you were probably going to win a matchup. It is not the case anymore. As the learning curve has sharply gotten better in this sport. And you can see the shake of the head low on pretty much every one of those throws. But head, close not be clear. Head, got one of those head judge Roger Melendrez. Five, four, four. Same score across, all tied up, going to the final two. Oh, now they're thinking about going up. A little, little strategy conversation. 
nice thing about this sport is even if they're competing, there's still, you know, some friendly collaboration. They're trying to bait each other in to going up. They have elected to stay down. And even if you miss the kill shot in knife throwing, you can earn the points. But at that but in a tie game, it doesn't really matter at this point. And this is a all-important throw is that last knife. Looks like it may have caught five. Oh, and Plank gets greedy and goes for the kill. Still gets one point, which is not much of a consolation prize, though. Five, four, three, one. Three and a one. Yeah. So Blank knew with the three that he had to go up in a tie game because he already seen Mike Tump get the score. So he had to go for the game. So Mike Tump takes game number two. Look at what I found, he says. They have excellent coverage both on the board, so they're very popular, but they don't quite have the sticking power, so you got to put a little bit extra force in there as opposed to a lot of the other knives that are available in the league. Third throw from Blank, that almost fell out of the board. A drop at this stage would have been catastrophic. Honestly, the fact that it bounced off the knife and still stuck in there is lucky, to say the least. A two-point edge for Mike Kump after the first three throws here in this third game of this first quarter final. Trying to get a good angle to see where he hit. <laughs> Wasn't a good throw. Six, six. Two bowls for Mike Cup a three-point lead as they step back to the back line. Our analyst is trying to avoid as much work as possible on this broadcast if he can make it into the semifinals. Yeah, just wants to throw. I don't really blame him. He was telling me earlier this weekend, he's like, oh, I'm just a has-been, you know. But here he is. I think it was part of the long comments trying to get under people's skin, a little mind game. The last throw by Blank, I think, split it. Nope, just going to be a five. But he's going to make up some ground here with two throws to go. Just a one-point gainer. So it should be a two-point lead for Mike Kump going to the final two throws. And Travis Blank is going to need to hit, you would imagine, a kill shot here to have a chance. You, get, you're not, you can go up twice, but it's not a full declaration, is it? No, they, they don't have to declare at all. All they have to do is just go for it. So we might see a surprise, but it's he's fighting uphill. Blank's going to wait here. He wants to see what he's up against. Because if this is a bowl, and it's pretty darn close to it. Got to do a little bit of math to see what his play is. Those are two good pressure throws. Don't know if that first one got up there, but it, you have to at least think it's a five and a five. And down two, I don't think you're going to risk trying to go for two bulls eyes. Now he has to go up. Yep, this is a 100% kill shot. It doesn't matter. And the 2021 U.S. Open is going to depart this world championship. Very disappointed. You can see the look on his face. He won that world title. Mike Kump moves on. And he's into the semifinals. Some excellent throwing by both. Blank still one of the top competitors in the league. This is no small fight. Well, the easiest way to talk about what just happened was to bring the guy who's our analyst for knife throwing back over to the chair. We'll hear from Mike Compa, a welcome round of applause for one of the best in the sport. Travis Blank is out. Comp moves on to the semifinals. Now we take a look at our match replay brought to you by Toro Knives. A bit of a shocker, but a lot to love for Mike Comp throwing in that first matchup. Losing the first set, but just got better and better. We talked about his scoring average throughout the tournament. 52 in the third set, including four bullseyes. And you can see the disappointment on the face of Travis Blank. So Kump moves on. Perhaps a surprise in our semifinal and his opponent determined next. At Happy Heart, our rich and full body roast coffee will transport you into another world of flavor. 
notes of caramel and chocolate, and the added health benefits of our superfood mushrooms, it will keep you filled with energy throughout the day. Happy Heart Coffee. Drink happiness. The World Knife Throwing League is sponsored by Axe Throwing Insurance. Make sure you get your venue insured today by visiting axethrowinginsurance.com. Our analyst, our buddy, Mike, comes into the semifinals. we got to figure out who's going to play him. Kyle Rickenbaugh and Dustin Knight set to do battle next. Let's meet the two competitors. Hi, my name is Kyle Rickenbaugh. I'm from Jasper, Indiana. Uh, I own two venues uh, in Evansville, Indiana and Jasper, Indiana. Uh, it's called Platinum Timber Axe Throwing Company. Uh, I've been throwing for four years. Uh, most notable win is putting Lucas uh, Johnson and Hayden Brown in V-Bracket in the first round in the 2021 uh, World uh, Axe Throwing Championships in duels. Uh, they went on to win that uh, world championship. Uh, I'm throwing uh, axes and knives for a living, so for my wife and, and family, so, uh, and, and to teach everybody else how to throw. So. Hi, my name is Dustin Knight. I live in Fargo, North Dakota, I'm from Fairbanks, Alaska. I throw out of United States Axe in Fargo and St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, I've been throwing for about two and a half years for axes. Been throwing knives for about six months. Uh, notable wins, don't have very many, but I've been working really hard on this craft and it's uh, paid off here at the World Championship, so I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, I do this, for, do this for my team back home, do it for my family, my lovely wife. She, watches me throw knives every day and get really frustrated and uh, those things. A couple of really entertaining throwers looking forward to this matchup. Kyle Rickenbaugh actually got into the sport after seeing it on television in terms of axe throwing, his transition as many have into knives. And then on the other side with Dustin Knight, he took out a couple of competitors that we had in the quarterfinals, including finalist Austin Bach at the U.S. Open back in July. So these two guys have certainly earned their spot here with a date with a man who's back, put him back to work. Congratulations, champ. Mike Kump into the semifinals, buddy. How you doing? Thank you. You know, sometimes it, uh, it's good to be good, and sometimes it's good to be lucky. And, uh, I'm the latter today. What are you looking forward to in this matchup? I'm looking forward to see if I can find some weaknesses because I need them. <laughs> Tell, uh, tell the folks, Evan, what they're throwing here as they get set for this first game in the best of three. So both competitors are taking advantage of the massive coverage of the World Knife Throwing League Blackhawk knives. That is a large amount of coverage that works really well when you're trying to get those extra points. Uh, they're a little controversial in the community just due to how much coverage they can get. But, uh, you know, the results are there, so... Yeah, Evan, I don't like it, and I don't like when people use it. And I would never use it to my own advantage. Yeah, we'd never see that before. And definitely didn't five minutes ago. <laughs> and we're going to step back to two spin here as they switch sides. Dustin Knight maintaining a slight edge for the final, going into the final five throws. Looking ball way too tall. And a drop. Talk pretty often about these. Uh, a lot of these games are very dependent on kind of your mental state, and one drop can just just wreck you for the rest of the match. And, and Kyle looking a little shaken there. Um, I'm hoping it was such a horrific set of throws that it actually resets him. It was it was so bad that it can't possibly get worse. Yeah, sometimes um, sometimes it works. They're gonna call a second there. And what just happened there was uh, Dustin's knife was over-rotated, and, and the part that was in the board was not the tip, it was the back piece, uh, which does not get scored. Yeah, it's a very important, uh, very slight rule, but the tip of the blade must be in the wood in order for the points to count. And it just ha so happened that one knife didn't have it. All right, not a lot of drama in game number one. Dustin Knight will take it. And Rickenbaugh needs to run the table in the final two games to get into the semifinal. Well, you've been on TV before, but what's the difference between having done it once and then being out there versus two guys who have never been under the lights like this before in this setting? I, I think the advantage for those of us that have done it before is that thing where you, you know what that nerves feels like and you know what that silence feels like. 
there is nothing more silent than, than the broadcast matches. You know, when we're doing this in the venue in the qualifying rounds, everyone's kind of jolly, making a lot of noise. There's a buzz in the room. When you step under these bright lights, it is a pin drop can be heard. And it, it gets to you. We're seeing Kyle five, with some rotation five, problems here. Five, five, four, zero. As you see the zero, he over-rotated one of those knives. Did not get the tip in the board. It is one of the downsides for the Blackhawks in particular because the tip is on such on one side of the knife as opposed to in the middle. So the tip is kind of the uh, the one downside to throwing that particular knife. Massive lead for Dustin Knight. And I don't want to call it, but if, if, if Kyle's having problems with rotation on single rotation mm -hmm. and he's not getting his angle right, it's not spelling well for, for when he steps back to the 15-foot line for two rotation. Six. Four. Four. The lead grows by one more as they'll step back. And again, if you're Kyle Rickenball, you need a drop now from Dustin Knight. You, you need a zero point on one of these final five throws to give yourself any chance. Yeah, you want a, some gamesmanship. You want him to wait, see what Dustin does maybe on his first throw, work his way in, and, and see what he has to do from there. I will say I was watching Dustin Knight um, competing or practicing a little bit earlier today, and the double rotation was where he was having some difficulty, so there might be a little hope, but he may have found his groove today. Ah, Kyle pulling that one low. It looks like Dustin's going to maintain a lead here. Four, four, three, five, four, four. And yeah, the lead swells. So again, Knight can do whatever he wants as long as he sticks two knives in the board. He's going to be moving on to the semifinals. How on the fly can you adjust when your rotation is off? I mean, it, 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 it's so it's so small, right? It's a fine adjustment, but how can you make that fine adjustment? Three ways. You can either step forward and back, or you can try to throw softer or harder, or you can adjust your hand on the knife. And you want to pick whichever one you hope is going to work for you when the lights are bright. I was struggling to do it all match, and I don't think I ever found it, but uh, now it's just like through. Tough one for Kyle Rickenbaugh, his first one. Dustin Knight gets a walk right into the semifinals. Mike, there's your opponent coming up a little bit later. Uh, I think he's stronger than that. I agree. <laughs> his beard is much longer, much more impressive. That's where the strength comes from. <laughs> All right, two semifinalists determined. Two more still yet to be decided here at the 2022 World Knife Throwing Championship. Our Toro Knives match replay. Dustin Knight, the pride of Fargo, North Dakota, takes care of Kyle Rickenbaugh. Knight into the semifinals. What'd you see from what's going to be your opponent coming up, Mike? I saw someone who doesn't look like a rookie. Smooth throwing, nice form. It's going to be a tough one. So two competitors into the semifinals. That leaves two slots still to be determined. It'll be Luce and Arnold coming up next. Welcome to the World Knife Throwing League. Created by the same team that brought the World Axe Throwing League and Urban Axe Throwing to the masses, the World Knife Throwing League looks to take the sport of knife throwing from the backyards across the world to the living rooms of millions at home. The World Axe Throwing League was able to leverage their 350 plus affiliate locations, allowing them to build out the infrastructure for a new urban knife throwing sports league. And after years of planning many iterations of rules, knives, and targets, the WKTL has arrived in 2021 and made its debut at the U.S. Open. The World Knife Throwing League borrows many of the rules from the World Axe Throwing League with a few notable exceptions. And if you're familiar with the sport of axe throwing, you will know that throwers collect their axes after every throw and return to the fault line. But in the WKTL, throwers alternate between three throws and two throws at each distance before retrieving the knives. This adds an extra layer of difficulty to the sport to avoid knocking existing knives out of the target. Knives are only scored immediately before retrieval, so if a knife falls to the ground as the result of another throw, it will be scored as a zero. The order of throws look like this. Three single rotation throws from the 10-foot line, then the knives are retrieved. Two single rotation throws from the 10-foot line, and after five throws of single rotation at the 10-foot line, competitors switch sides. You then have three double rotation throws from beyond the minimum of 15 feet with that line, then the knives are retrieved, and then two more double rotation throws from beyond the minimum 15-foot line. You can learn more at WorldKnifeThrowingLeague.com. My name is Tony Luce from the Cut Axe Throwing in College Station, Texas. I've been doing this for about four years. 
Uh, this year I won Ironside with my, my partner, uh, Fancy Lad, um, and I'm doing this for the people at the Cut College Station and the guys that I throw with, uh, Fancy Lad and Vale Cook. Hi there, my name is Sebastian Arnold. I come from White Plains, New York. This year I'll be representing Barry the Hatchet and Jersey Axe House in the World Knife Throwing Championship. Uh, this is my very first World Championship, so I just want to show everyone that if, even if you have no experience, if you practice hard enough, you can make it here too. And I'm doing this for my family. Thank you. This could be really interesting. We could see some unorthodox stuff from Luce coming up here, can't we, Mike? He was breaking down the math for me last night about why. And said, look, you have the opportunity to come back even if you miss a couple of early, but say you hit two out of the gate or even just one in the first three throws, you can build such a sizable point edge, but then you force your opponent to have to go up from that back line. Both of these guys just absolutely peppering the middle of the board. Accuracy and precision in those first three knives. the guts guy. I, I still don't know how you fit three knives into that tiny little circle and to have the stones to go for it. It's it's tough because if you collide the wrong way and don't slip in, that's going to be on the floor and that's going to be a drop. I've said it before, there has not been a perfect game yet on official league play, but <laughs> <laughs> we lose perfection on throw number four. Trying to find an angle and yeah, does to the middle. Smooth. Smooth and loose. Four, four, six, five. I mean, a very acceptable first five throws from Sebastian Arnold, but he's down six, stepping into the back line because of a near perfect start from Tony Luce. Yeah, he's, he's out there, huge lead. He's, Sebastian's going to need a miracle comeback. I mean, he's, he should wait here, see what Tony does from two spin. Maybe his, you know, his rotation's not going to be right, but it's going to be tough to come back. Arnold did say coming into this tournament that he was going to win it. And it's the first time I've ever heard anybody introduce themselves as the person who's going to win the knife uh, championship. Well, he's going to have to step it up. Because he's going to be down quite a bit. He's turning his pepper right there at the spin. Sebastian's going to have to go for two kill shots here. And then he also gets some help. And it's not something he's been known to do. And league play very rarely ever goes for the eight-point blue dots. And it is tough from 15 feet. Yeah, if you need the blue, you want to be doing it early from one spin, from 10 feet. From all the way in the back, pray. Eight-point lead for Luce. Arnold has a drop from his competitor. Okay. Made up two points with that one, but Luz just buries it. And it's all over. Oh. Had to go at it and may need to fall back on the feel of that one going into game number two. But that is about as good as you are going to see in knife throwing from Tony Luce in the first one. The aim was there, just the, the power was not. Tony Luce looking good, looking good, the Texan. It looks like he's lining up bullseye. He's, yeah, I guess he's just confident, doesn't want to risk it. Let's see where he goes. Oh, here we go. No, no, he's just getting angled back to the bull. He's thinking. Nice grouping from Sebastian. And Tony hitting the bull there. Absolutely solid. It's like two sticks in the floor. Six, six, five, four, six, four, four. So, same thing as last round. Tony opening up with a big lead after three. And, and one of the keys here you're going to see all day is from 10 feet, from one rotation, you really want to keep the game close. It is so tough to make up points when you step back to that 15-foot line. 
you're really relying on defense than you are offense when you go back to that line of trying to make up a difference, right? Absolutely. And if there's one thing you don't want to be doing in throwing sports is hoping that your opponent is going to miss, you want to be confident that you can hit. Yeah, you're already on the back pedal when you have to hope that they miss up. Absolutely. Six, six, five, four. So if you're Sebastian Arnold, you're just going to like, what did I do to get this draw in the quarterfinal? I mean, if he plays in the match we just saw prior to this one, he's winning. Like, I mean, he, he takes out either of those guys in the previous quarterfinal, but he is just running up into a mammoth performance from Tony Luce right now, who's one point away from perfect halfway through this second game. Sometimes it's the luck of the draw, and sometimes it's the unluck. And Sebastian might be on the wrong end of it here. But this isn't over. Finding where they need to be to get that grouping done. Again, those double rope. Oh. Oh. Is it high? It is high. Yeah. Just off on the rotation. Felt like he needed to make a little statement there. I am sure it got in for one yeah. up top. And, and this is a good example. You see how it's dead center in front of that kill. And if you're not getting your power and rotation exactly correct, you're not going to hit. Four, four, zero, Oof. five, four, four. It's going to be a march into the semifinals for Tony Luce as long as these two knives find the board on throws 9 and 10. 42, 31. Tony from the cut axe throwing in College Station. Kind of giving a Sebastian an education here in how to throw under the bright lights. At least a five. Pretty close, but just a little under on that kill shot. I think Tony knows he has it here. And went up for sportsmanship. It's going to hurt the average, but it's not going to hurt the reputation. That was a clinic by Tony Luce into the semifinals. And if you're handicapped in the field the rest of the way, that man's going to be hard to beat. I mean, perfect out of the gate from Tony Luce. Guys, that was that was fun to watch. That was intense, and I mean, Sebastian Arnold ended up on the wrong end of it. Throwing great himself, but Tony just smooth, no nerves. He's going to be tough to beat today. Oh, yeah. And sometimes you're just in it on that day. You're just in the zone, and Luce apparently is just right there, riding the wave. So the 44-year-old from College Station into the semifinals. That was our Toro Knives replay. Mike Kump, Dustin Knight in the first semifinal. Tyler Flynn and Manny Cole set to do battle to meet Luce in semifinal number two. One more quarterfinal to go here in Wisconsin. The World Knife Throwing League is proudly sponsored by Bad Axe Throwing. Visit BadAxeThrowing.com today to book an event in your city. It's changing outside here at the Fox Cities Exhibition Center, beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin. Things heating up in here for the final quarterfinal of this World Knife Throwing Championship. Tyler Flynn and Manny Cole, let's learn more about it. Tyler Flynn, I'm throwing out of Timber Beast Axe Throwing near Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, this is my first time on ESPN. I've lost the game to make it there nine times, so it feels good to get that tenth one in and finally be completing a knife, some potentially big axe. Um, knife is the only discipline I haven't won so far. I've got a few wins in the other disciplines, but I'm hoping to get a knife one under my belt as well. Um, hey, my name is Manny Cole. I live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I throw out of blades and boards. I've been throwing competitively for about four years now. Um, I had a win at the Super 64 in a random duels tournament. Other than that, just gotten close quite a few times. And I'm just doing this for my wife and all the people back home. Really good weekend throwing out of Manny Cole. And there's a lot of Wisconsin support behind him. But there may not be much more support in the entire community than for Tyler Flynn. Nine times he had a chance to play his way into 
a television broadcast either in knife throwing or axe throwing finally gets here in 2022 with the Worlds. A feel good story guys as they're set to throw here in this first of best of three games. And Tyler taking the opportunity and starting off hot right there down the middle. Putting too much power into it, the knife doesn't rotate around enough and bounces off. Having to sort of mentally reset after that one. Six, six, five, six, six, run. Five points, three throws in. Handicap this showdown right for me between these two. I mean, you got Tyler Flynn, as we said, the rookie to TV, the man who has missed so many opportunities to get there. And Manny Cole who has been on appearances on broadcast in throwing sports and has crushed it. So Tyler has to have that in his head going in and Manny has to be confident, you know, in his experience that he's able to come back. But apparently not very confident because he just went for two kills there when I don't think he needed to. Well, it was, I think it was a little bit of the smarter play, honestly, going for the kills from the 10 foot line, just so it was a little easier, but he still ended up missing them. So I think he just kind of solidified himself one, as a, one. not taking this yeah. first match. Kind of, kind of giving up early, a little, those don't, both don't hit, it's kind of a white flag, but you could get some drops from Tyler Flood going back to the and, that's, and that's the balance, that's the kind of risk they have to try to take. Do you go to, for the catch up early in one spin, or do you hope that your opponent kind of messes up when you step back to the next line. It's an 11 point lead. It is still just the first game, so Cole's not out of it yet. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Two drops. And this has turned into a sort of a frenetic, we sort of, we know what the result's gonna be, kind of throw between these two. I see a few more of the drops. Uh, from Manny Cole, he's throwing those Blackhawks. Again, they have a very Four, wide surface, zero, but that also drop. means you need a bit more strength Six, to make sure that they penetrate through the wood. Drop. Whereas uh, Tyler Finley is throwing four knives to Nice, solid tip Last right in the middle on there, but still has some really good coverage. And, and Tyler, no stranger to knife throwing. Um, him and I have done some online knife throwing in years past. Uh, you know, while a rookie to, to the broadcast here. Cole just looking to find that kill shot. Oh. Again, once you've gone up, you're two allotted times. Oh. He's kind of going for practice at that point in time. He knew what the result was going to be. Flynn takes game number one. I've talked to Manny before, too, and he, he understands that. For especially these broadcasts, it's mostly his mental game. Gift wrapped game one. Let's see how quickly Andy Cole can reset here. That one over rotated a bit on him and barely stuck into the board. In fact, it may not count the way it's out of it. We'll have to see what the judges do. If it is a zero, a high knife on the left side, and it's an extra stare at it. Nobody looks happy with their throws. <laughs> Just a piece of the tip of Cole's knife in the board to get the score. And gets off to a good start. Yeah. 13, 14 is the score. You Manny do have to have one. the tip of the knife four, in the board for it to count. So even if the knife is stuck Thanks in the board, clear. the tip's not in. It's no score. And once that tip is in, Evan, the remaining uh, blade that has penetrated the board will be your scoring area. Correct. But if that tip is not in, as you said, zero. Taking advantage of the, the Blackhawk shape there. Driving a lot of the blade into the bullseye. Six, five, six, four. The Cole take a two point lead. Back to the two rotation farther line. Going Trying to even up this quarterfinal at a game of peace. Two. From six, seven, and eight. Lane's clear. Wow. Cole's getting back into the groove. Oh, I skipped the 
so does Tyler who hits. I'm not sure that Manny made enough of an adjustment with his feet, and he just hits the back of his knife. Wow, that gets aggressive, too. Shoves it in there when he didn't have to, just knowing his opponent dropped. Rude. Rude <laughs> from Tyler. <laughs> Look at him laughing at all. So Manny Cole's going to have to hit two kill shots and get some help from Tyler Flynn, or Flynn's going to make his first TV appearance a little bit longer into the semifinals. It would seem so. Flynn, when not throwing sharp things, loves the disc golf, but uh, it's wintertime. There's no more disc golf right now. He's been practicing some throwing, and we see it today. Wait a week, you could skip the disc across the river out back. <laughs> it's going to freeze over before you know it at these temperatures. Ooh, that might be a solid kill shot. Drop with a low throw already. And what will kill. these scores be? We're going to have 10 points for Manny if that's in. Drop, drop. Good kill. Good kill with a two. Makes it up with a 10 point final two to force a decisive third game. He needed a kill and some help. He got a kill and some help. And has brought the crowd to life. We go to a game number three. Wow. It's this tough thing where you're like, okay, just get at the stick. But that's not how you normally throw. So you're, you're like, all right, go through my normal routine. And when you just needed the stick, it seems that much harder to do. As silly as that sounds, sometimes it's better to need a really big shot than it is to just need something. Cole goes very quickly. Good start from both. Because he might have the edge by a point with that spread of knives. Five, 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 six, six, five. The two edge for Tyler Flynn. So he has led early in the first two games. Two-point game. And a Tyler nice comeback in those drops yeah. to, to drop the 6 6 five right there. Lane's clear. You see them adjusting their feet to get a different angle um, into the bowl. And not, they, they want to do that, so they're getting away from the knife that's in there and trying to slide another one in so they don't hit the back of the existing one. Because that's what a lot of times is going to cause your drops when you hear that collision. Six, four, five, five. No blood. Three, four, and five. Then we'll maintain a two point edge, heading to the two rotations. He's trying to keep it loose, isn't he? Tyler taking a deep breath there, and I think uh, the whole crowd is we're stepping back to rotation. This is, what, this is what makes it all count. Lane's clear. In terms of the mental game, you can kind of see the differences between the two competitors, where Flynn is trying to keep it relaxed and you know loose, and Cole's kind of centering in and honing in a little bit. Just trying to get in that proper headspace. Seems to be working. One more, one more knife for Flynn here. He's getting the angle to the right. And does he? Does he get the angle down into the bull there? Looks a little high. for a second opinion here on one of these. Head judge, Roger Melendrez, goes in to double check. Let's keep it up for our judges. Yeah. Five, zero, zero. Oh, wow. Wow. Because Manny had over-rotated, as we talked about, the disadvantage of the Blackhawks. Uh, the tip is on the forward edge, not the back there. He over-rotated. Tip wasn't in the board. Not going to get points, and I mean, Tyler's up. 12. 12. Tyler, just knife, please. <laughs> <laughs> Two on the board. We'll get it done. There it is. He, okay, so he threw a four, I believe, which would, it might be a five. Manny would need two kills 
at minimum yeah, to top up. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. So he's mathematically done, even if this doesn't hit the board. From Tyler Flynn. He goes upstairs. What an interesting final quarter final. I mean, two guys really good. We saw some impressive stuff, but a couple of odd drops, a couple of off sticks, and Tyler Flynn's going to extend his stay on TV. And here's our Toro Knives replay of that final quarter final. A good test for Tyler Flynn to move on to the semifinals. A little bit of a gift from Manny in that first set, but he had to go the distance and was able to get it done in the end. 47 points in that final set. Tyler Flynn moving on, and our last quarter finalist into the semifinal bracket. Then there were four competing for a title here at the World Knife Throwing Championship. We're Bad Axe Throwing, an Urban Axe Throwing Club. We're here to show you an unforgettable experience. Don't take it from us. Take it from hundreds of thousands of customers and countless five-star reviews. Whether it's a corporate event, birthday party, bachelor or bachelorette party, heck, even just hanging out with friends. We're the go-to destination for adults who want to have fun. Our expert coaches will teach you how to throw an ax in no time. Be a bad ax. Book your event today. Into the semifinals we go, four remain. Mike Tuff and Dustin Knight warming up right now with Tony Luce and Tyler Flynn. Second of the two semifinals. We have a new world champion of knife throwing in the second year that we have contested this one. And this is going to be a fascinating one. Mike Tuff leaves the broadcast booth to go face Dustin Knight, who really didn't have to do much in his quarterfinal against Kyle Rickenbaugh, who really struggled with his rotation. And, and Evan, that kind of leads to a fascinating question. Like, you didn't have to grind in the quarterfinal. You're going to have to grind here against Mike Kump. Absolutely. And, you know, Mike Kump is uh, happy to talk about how mediocre his throwing is, but uh, honestly, he's, he's just very humble. He, he, it is going to be a fight for Knight. Last one a little high from Kump, but a good start for both throwers. Six, six, four. Six, six, five. And one point extra night for Nolan is perfect with his first two throws. Both competitors throwing the black box as we've talked about in the broadcast right, earlier. Great four, coverage. Five, four point game. But uh, they just have to make sure that their rotation is good. Lane's clear. Dustin Knight started throwing knives really only in the last six months, but has really been grinding on getting better at it. Absolutely loves the challenge of this one. And the power through, makes contact with the knife. And that drop is going to give Knight a sizable lead going to the back line. That's the, uh, that is one of the very strategies of this uh, any little bit of difference, you have to worry about almost like the minefield of your own knives on the target to try to avoid. The three point game, 25, 28. Dustin, go six, seven, and eight. <laughs> eight point lead for Dustin Knight. Starts low. There's a bit of an opening here. You're going to have to start making. You can do the math in your head pretty quickly here, Evan. I mean, every throw you get to gain two points, really, if you're Mike Kump. And it did it. Yeah. Battle, but you may have gotten one or two back. Four, four, three, five, three, four, four. What is the score? About a six point difference now. Come behind 33 to 39. Looks like he's right. most definitely going to have to go for a kill shot. Lane's clear. Easy. As long as Knight is consistent with these two throws. It's a game. Mike talks about that game that he wants to see, and well, he sees that the mountain got really tall now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks like he's squaring up for that kill shot. And the drop, that pretty much solidified this match. We'll do it. In game number one, boarded by Knight. 
So he's been the beneficiary of some bad throws from opponents. Got off to a good start here, applied the early pressure. And Six, trying to accelerate two, his walk back five. here to his chair. Next throw here, Evan. Not his best game, but chance to make two in a row to still get to the game. One practice throw here. Game number two. You know, it might be one of those things, you just got to get kind of the, the bad throws out, save them for when you get to the end. Getting their practice throw in. Hopefully you can kind of reset a little bit. Your it's interesting too, you have the choice too. Do you want to throw a two rotation or a one rotation? Throw for that one practice. Comp decides to hone in on the short distance scoring will throws here, try and get off to a good start. Yeah, well, as you mentioned earlier, especially throwing from the 10 foot line the first half of the match, it's more about being in the offense. So that's when you can really kind of be aggressive with your throws and, and take a little bit more risk. Just like that. Might just be under that bullseye, but we're about to find out. Five, five, four. Six, four, four. Looks like that's six and good. <laughs> 14 points apiece after the first three throws. Okay, this one was a bullseye. We have a tie game. Oh, so four and five. Lane's clear. Two more throws from the 10 foot distance. Last chance to be fairly aggressive. Then they're going to move back to the 15 foot line. Have to work on their double rotation. Who's going to blink first in this second game? That was a very solid first five six, throws. Five, five, five. We probably may have had two six fives, but. Trump could not find the bullseye with either of those throws. So he's down one and down a game, heading to the final five throws here of game number two. Oh yeah, it's still anyone's game at this point, but now we get into kind of the danger zone when uh, you're back this far. Having to go for that double rotation. Just very calm from Knight. And a lot of effort. See how quiet that body stays. Mm -hmm. At this distance, it's almost. Oh, and I said, say that I jinxed him. Yep. I was just about to say, it's, it's almost uh, just good enough if you can just keep the knife on the board. But it didn't look like a bad throw either, Evan. It was just made the contact you just couldn't make with another knife. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, again, the Blackhawks have some, it, some heavy advantages and heavy disadvantages. And, you know, the, the width and the coverage that those knives provide is, is very nice for getting it widespread on the board, but getting it stuck on that board is a little more difficult. It takes a little bit more of that uh, strength to get in. So a non-scoring knife means that Mike Kelp takes a three-point lead in the final two throws. Certainly not a gap that is insurmountable. Yeah, Dustin may go for it. Kill shot. Well, maybe not. Go for the safe throw. Boy, he didn't look over. If he looked over, he would have changed the strategy, but that appears to be enough for Mike Kump to force a decisive third game. Unless that first knife is their blade in the board up top. Five, four, five, four. So it's a three point win for Mike Kump here in game number two. And they'll play one. Final. Mike, win or go home. Third game. So the drops become the story of this semifinal. Kump with the cup of game number one to give it to Dustin Knight. And then Knight with a one point edge drops one in game number two to give the advantage right back. Just got their practice throw in. Got a little bit of a reset. All right, gentlemen, game number three. Throws one, two, and three. We go into the first three throws. Lane's clear. No doubt there's pressure being felt. Ooh. Even from someone who's been accustomed to the bright lights. Mike Kump and a good start from Dustin Knight. You can see how comfortable he was with those throws, how too. How quick, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can really tell when someone's getting comfy with their throw when they can be able to start peppering them off that quick. Six, six, four. One point lead for Mike Kump. 
two bulls eyes there. We have a one point lead, 15 16. Cup throws four and five. Look at all three knives and decide Thanks which two. I think there's really anything to look at. <laughs> so your two favorites. You have, to, you have to hurt the feelings of the third one that doesn't get to go. Yeah, you know, maybe spread it out. You know, next time I'll let you all use the next knife. No, sometimes there's just a maybe a proper nick in one of the knives you want to avoid or something. Or maybe it's just all superstition. Wow. Four bowls across the board. That gets them on their feet. Narrowest of margins, Kump leading by one. Heading to the back. This is going to decide who goes forward. Only one Thanks point difference in anyone's match. You mentioned Mike Kump has two U.S. Open titles in axe throwing, does not have a world championship in any discipline of axe throwing. So the opportunity to play for a world title in knife throwing would be clutch, but that might be a bullseye. Start from night. have to stick at this juncture. And that's going to be a pretty wide spread, but I think that far left one for Knight is outside of where the tip is, so that might be a zero. Six, four, zero. Yeah, there it is. Five, four. Good late recovery by Mike Kump. The over rotation, or is it an under rotation? Five, four, Knight who does four, not dispute that zero. It's a six-point lead for Mike Kump with two throws to go. And he knows it just like we know it. He puts two of these on the board. It is very unlikely he gets beat. And he's going to see if Knight waits. He's been very fast to operate. He's not waiting. And may have Solid made up sixes. one point, but needs a kill. Ooh, oh, wait a second. Hit it. He got it, but it's not going to be enough because Kump found the middle of the board. Couple of fours, but it's not enough. Take a look at our Toro Knives match recap of that semifinal. Really, the story was the drops early. Knight drop getting come back into that showdown, and then the double rotation late to find the middle of the board. Even when Knight hits the kill, you can see how excited he was, but it wasn't enough because Kump was able to deliver the shots he had to near the middle of the board, maximize those points. It's a three-point win in the decisive third game. He's standing by with Rob Leverance. Hey, Rob. Uh, hey, guys. Mike Kump, what a great win there. How do you feel about going to the championship? Well, I'll be honest, Rob, not very well. I thought my you know years of experience in throwing other sharp things, my years of experience in bowling and disc golf would help me. It seems my belief in miracles is the only thing getting me by today. Was it distracting for you at all to physically come out of the broadcast booth to come onto the stage to make it to the championship? Rob, when you know nothing about throwing, there's nothing to forget. And uh, yeah, so I was fine. There you have it, folks. Advice from a pro. Thank you very much. One finalist determined, one more to go. Our second semifinal is next. The World Knife Throwing League is sponsored by Toro Knives. Outfit your throwing game by visiting worldknifethrowingleague.com to get a set of Toro Knives today. Final. Mike Kump is in the championship. He's going to face one of these two guys. And he's still being modest. He's nervous about what might happen between these two. Is they have started uh, aggressively here. Yeah, they decided to go kills each, uh, which was a move that we talked about. Tony was doing on Friday, and uh, Tyler wanted to kind of always do whatever anybody wants to do. Went right up with him. <laughs> and they're laughing it off. <laughs> Trying to get into a little bit of a rhythm here. 
Again, you can go for the kill shot anytime you want to. You can only count two makes. So once you've gotten to eight points, you're done. But the risk comes good with. Good kill shot. Four, two. Good kill shot. Four, two. Wow. And they're tied after the first three. How about that? And, and the, the strategy there is say you throw for kill and also one point. And then you throw again and you hit it. That's nine points. It's about the same as a five and a four. It's not really doing you any disservice. Yeah, especially from that distance. Take it while it's a little easier up front. You only got two more throws from this distance. I might be able to be suckered into going for the kill in the final. We'll see. <laughs> I can't hit the bullseye anyway, so what's the difference? There you go. All right, we got some close looks here. I think uh, on the right there, Ragnar, looking at that as a five or a four. Six, five, six, four. Let's see if Tyler gets a second look. All he has to do is touch that scoring zone with, a, with one either side of the blade. And yeah, look at him pulling out his own flash. Second opinion, he wants it. Head judge not line and an even brighter one. Well, the line it has to be on has to have some part Let's of that plate inside the wood, inside the black scoring circle. Run with the one size touching this. Six, five. And it's over. Over turn, we stay tied. Head judge Roger Lindros. Good second opinion call by Tyler. Time to spin. it up. Tied game. Lane's clear. Now, in earlier matches, we've seen both of these players have phenomenal two spin throws and some not so great throws from two spin. Tony under rotating his first and under rotates further. I am comfortable. Oh, that doesn't count for anything. <laughs> Impressive as it may be, it is uh, no score. <laughs> a very distinct knife and look at this Tyler creating the, the laugh in the crowd Tony maybe not taking a moment to reflect on that previous throw under rotates again and drops and you notice that his knife hit onto the right side of that four where it hasn't been hit much today it's a very fresh board going to be a lot harder to stick there that one that he did stick is dead down the center where the board's getting beat up a little bit Shocking that you have two drops there. Kind of felt like as friendly and musical as this first game has been. They were going to stay tied going to the last two throws. But Flynn in the driver's seat here to take game number one. Just a four point edge, even with two drops from your opponent. You know, seeing, seeing Luce throw earlier, he was a lot more kind of focused, a lot more dead honed. He is a lot. Looser now it seems and kind of enjoying the, the match a bit. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with uh, his, how varied his points are within this match as, a, as opposed to the one he was throwing before. They're doing the math. I think Luce has gotten within three based off of the one knife in the board. He has to go up here, you think? He's going to go still too low. That's going to be Tyler Flynn for this match. Just needed to board it. He did. To Tyler Flynn, game one. You know, as good as Tony Luce was in the quarterfinal win, to come out and almost treat this semifinal differently may have really backfired on. Not just the strategy of going early, but a lot of banter back and forth, not really in the zone. And maybe that's the thing where Tony and Tyler know each other well. Tyler's such a, a fun guy who has, you know, just, I don't know, such an energy about him that kind of loosens you up. Maybe that's not good for Tony. Tony track pants needs a win here to stay alive. Practice right, throw done. One, two, three. Do we see early kill shot strategy employed here in the second game with Luce up against it? It looks like he's staying tight. Yeah, I think he's wanting to get back into that mindset beforehand, keeping it serious. So to give some more insight into that first round where they went up for kills, Tyler, uh, in, he does axe throwing, is known for doing something called the spicy dice, 
where you roll to die and determine what time you're going to go for the kill shot. And uh, he does that to a lot of opponents and gets them to do things that they would never do otherwise. And maybe that's why in that first round they went up. Five, five, four, five, five, four. They're tied again. Funny that they were tied at 14 after the first three throws, going for kills in the first game. They're tied at 14, going the traditional route. It sort of plays out your the math that you were talking about. It, be aggressive, but again, it pays off if you can find that blue circle at least once. Absolutely. Tony looks like he's lined up to the right, maybe. Oh, he's staying down. Okay. Just trying to find his uh, his niche so he can make sure he gets a good grouping on those bullseyes. Great throws from Tony. And four really good throws. Yeah. Rotation throw. Trying to lock in. I think it's safe to say. I mean, Tyler kind of baited him into a, a little different mood out there that may have cost him in game number one. I think so. But let's see when he steps back to two spin here. Tyler under rotating. Mm. Tony under rotating again, but still sticking. The advantage of the Blackhawks. Fixing the rotation. Tyler fixing it, but low. <laughs> It looks like he's just happy to get it stuck. All right, Tyler needs to reset here and get a five or six. Stay in this. Ooh, I think he got a five there. Oh, no. I think he's to the right. Yep. Six, five, three, four, three, five. Up a big margin. It's going to be eight points, the lead for Tony Luke. Going to the final two throws, chance to even up this semifinal match. Yeah, going to a third and decisive game. Last two throws. Let's see if uh, looks like Luce is going to have to drop something. Do you think Tony will rip off those track pants in the final? Do I, we think that you are going to rip off his track pants in the final is probably a more appropriate question. Well, now you're just giving away the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler missing the kill, so we're going to go three for sure here. It's just, just a practice throw for each of them, really. And look at Tony. Oh, the smile, the confident victory. That's the throwing I saw him doing on Friday and the throwing I saw him doing warming up. Um, very unlike that first round. Oh, he it felt like in that first round, Tony was reaching. And what happens when you reach is you're closer to the board, which means that your, your knife doesn't have enough time to rotate all the way around, which we saw him under-rotating and dropping in that first round. For the folks at home who aren't familiar, this may look very easy. Like, it may look like they're very close to the board, which, you know, 10 feet away, maybe not that far, but being accurate consistently at this level is, you know, these guys are the best of the best. That's why they're here at the World Championship, so they make it look easy. The combination, uh, you know, of, of getting the power into it and getting that touch right, is Here we go. Start it's just so hard three. to repeat. Yeah. 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 Could you conceivably have a two rotation throw from this Thanks, distance or a one rotation throw from farther back that... Oh, absolutely. Um, I've seen people do no spin throwing from as far back as 30 feet. Uh, it, not advised <laughs> for good accuracy, <laughs> but uh, it is possible. And a lot of that comes down to the weighting of the knife and where the weight lies. And the, box, the, the weight is very, I'll call it head heavy. It's up towards the tip. And, and you want to let that, that tip just carry itself around and let the weight do the work. What a spread. Six, six, six. That's in there. Yeah. Yeah. If that had been a Blackhawk, it would have been out. Yeah. Right? Because the tip is in the middle of the blade. Two more throws from 10 feet. Loose up by three. Just buried that one. Oh. 
I don't think that was a... Tyler tries to get some momentum back by going for a kill shot. May have gotten lucky to get two points out of it. I'm in between on the strategy there. Part of me thinks you just wait to see if Tony can hold it together on two spin. Based on last round, he will. Yeah, Tyler going for it, will pay off. Felt like he had to do something special there to try and get back closer, but it's a seven-point deficit for Tyler Flynn with five throws to go and probably needs a drop from Tony Luce here on these two rotations. Tyler needs some uh, luck, and uh, I might need some luck in the finals if Tony <laughs> keeps throwing like this. Well, you've seen the blueprint. you got to get him to do something silly early so you can try and get a lead. Maybe we can do uh, you know, tactical rolls around the arena <laughs> before the match. Tyler a little bit to the right. Great height on that throw, though. Tony securing a four. And also waiting with the lead. Waiting out Tyler Flynn. Great throw. Oh, it's low, though, isn't it? Mm. Tyler over-rotating a little bit. Ooh. Tony, Tony just taking points, it looked could like, Could he on that not throw. decide if he wanted to go for the bullseye or kill shot? Uh, <laughs> just throwing one right in between? Yeah, just, you know, meet in the middle. Okay. Up and seven. He's going to lose a little ground or a little bit of the lead it would appear here but maybe just valuing sticking which look Five, we've seen four, can four, be the big difference six, four, three. and and i can't recall the exact round but i, I did have a moment earlier where I was just near the stick and i had to play that out in my head of uh, do i go for an open part of the board that's fresh or do i just send it towards the bullseye beat in and easier to stick into but risk the collision and we saw tony maybe Go into the fresher part of the board, but just not want to hit his own nine. Still a seven-point lead. Now. Tony Luce had the benefit of that full side. But he knew it was pure to give him the flexibility to just throw it up there and take three points. Final two throws. And if both stick in the wood for Luce, especially with that kill shot missing. Just a Flynn. Just a little low. Did that? Tony over rotated, but I think so. He may have buried it though. He's, he's right in the bullseye. He may have buried deep enough to get the tip in. Hard to say. Going all the way back for some extra incentive. Maybe the future of the WKTL is in three rotation. Evan? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We got lots of big plans coming up. So oh, Tony taking big steps <laughs> as he takes a big leap into the finals. Going for the three rotation. Don't hurt anybody. Uh, if he would have stuck that, I think that would have been I wouldn't yeah. even have shown up to you right <laughs> Well, that's your opponent coming up in the championship. Tony so Luce survives a sort of weird strategic game that got him out of his Everybody rhythm in game number one. But then puts the afterburners on to run away from Tyler Flynn. He's into the championship. And he'll battle our Mike Cup coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Look at our Toro Knives match replay. It was an interesting start, fellas, for them to make the decision to go for kill shots. It kind of, even though they were tied, it just didn't feel like we were in a rhythm. Luce found his rhythm faster than Tyler Flynn the rest of the way. Yeah, Luce wanted to go up kill that first round, paid for it, lost the round to Tyler. The next two, no way, stayed down and, and earned his way to the finals. Cool, calm, and collected at the end of it, and there you see what began with eight at the beginning of the show is down to just two. $2,000 to the winner of that coming matchup between Mike Kump and Tony Luce. There can be only one. 1,500 a second, so you're good. Yeah, with a cool trophy. There's only one trophy, that's right. You'll have cash in your pocket. Man who always has cash in his pocket is standing by with Tony Luce. We kick it over to Rob Leverance. And I'm here with Tony Luce. You made it to the championship. Uh, what an exciting semifinal match. How do you feel about that? was probably the most entertaining match. Uh, what kind of high were you riding right there? I mean, Tyler Flynn is one of my favorite people to throw against. He always makes it a lot of fun. And we, you know, we saw in that first game, we went kill, kill, bull, because we believe at this point that's where the game needs to go. And he's brave enough to do it with me. So that's what we did. You know, it's great. We saw you at the end of the match step back further. What were you trying to do there? 
You mean the triple rotation at the end there? Yeah, that we both failed miserably. But basically, when we get to the point where the match is out of reach, we like to have a bit of fun. And Tyler stepped back and tried to hit a triple, and I, I followed up. And we both How do you feel about going to the championship face uh, against Mike Kump? Uh, I'm really excited. Mike Kump is like a legend guy. He's been around a long time, you know, in axe throwing and knife throwing. Um, and I'm surprised to see him here. But, you know, he's a talented dude. Um, and hopefully we put on a good match. Congratulations, Tony. Great match. We'll see you in the championship. We're doing a legendary performance coming up. Championship is in our sights. It'll be Kump and Loose for the title of World Knife Throwing Champion coming up next. The World Knife Throwing League is brought to you by Toro Knives. Visit WorldKnifeThrowingLeague.com to free the bull today. At Happy Heart, our rich and full body roast coffee will transport you into another world of flavor. Notes of caramel and chocolate and the added health benefits of our superfood mushrooms, it will keep you filled with energy throughout the day. Happy Heart Coffee. Drink happiness. The World Knife Throwing League is sponsored by Toro Knives. Outfit your throwing game by visiting WorldKnifeThrowingLeague.com to get a set of Toro Knives today. Fox City's Exhibition Center, now the site of a World Championship tussle. Two remaining to be called a world champion. Mike Philibaum, the first world knife throwing champion a year ago, he's in the house. He's gonna hand off the crown to one of these two men. It is Mike Kump, who is for the third time today left his analyst chair to go and compete against Tony Luce, who I think Evan has been fair to say has been the most impressive of the eight throwers that we have seen today. But it's a little bit different when there is a title on the line. Five practice throws to get us going here in this championship. What are you looking for in this showdown for a title? Honestly, I, you know, Mike has been uh, doing an excellent job so far, but he is uh, he is up against a pretty pretty tough match. Luce has been just absolutely in the zone. Uh, we saw a little bit of that element that he fell out of in the last match uh, against Tyler Flynn, but uh, I think he's gotten kind of that out of his system a little bit, and uh, we're going to find out. But maybe, maybe Mike underselling himself a little bit too. First three throws are on the board and six, they were tight. Five, five, six, five, five, six. And they are tied after three throws in game number one. No second opinion needed. They're good with that. So in that semifinal showdown between Luce and Tyler Flynn, they talked themselves into going for kill shots early. There has been no such agreement reached here to be aggressive as these players have stayed down, going for bullseyes, out of the shoot, and a really good start for both. Mike is, uh, I think, you know, his headspace is pretty good. He's really good about being relaxed and kind of in the moment, but at the same time, I think just in the back of his head a little bit. He, he understands how much of a powerhouse loose can be when he's focused. So he's just trying to keep up, I think. But we'll six, see. Five, six, five, Still tied, heading back to two rotations. Both of them nearly perfect from the 10 foot line. Uh, this, this, kind of, this is the kind of match you would expect for the World Championship title. And Evan, think about where we've come. The first time we put knife throwing on TV was the US Open in 2021, and it was pretty much, if you hit the board, for 10 throws, you're going to win that competition. It has no longer become that. Some of these best urban indoor throwers have added knives to their arsenal. And the volatility of the scoring has made this so fun and compelling. Loose struggling a bit with the rotation. Needs to settle in. Comes happy with that spread. More happy with the stick to the board. And Loose figures out the rotation. We could be tied still after these three throws. Yeah, they're all pretty close. I think Loose might have a slight point advantage on this, but it's hard to say. We're going to hear from our head judges. Looks like uh, Judge Lawson's taking out the flash. Let me just double check. Nope. He is 
not. So two throws to go and lose the two-point edge. This has been a very solid first game. Two more throws, that's all they get. 15 foot away, two rotations. Another one that rotated. That one a little low from Kump. Looks like is they... that loose knife, is the tip sticking in the board? It's hard to say. And now they're waiting each other out. <laughs> Kump didn't realize the uh, on final throws if uh, neither thrower decides to go, the person who is behind is going first. Uh, Michael Storch didn't throw. Somewhere inside of two for the Watch out here. Watch out here. It was just a two point gap. <laughs> Loose offering is nice. Six and a four to a four and a three, and Mike Kump makes up the gap with those two throws. Gets to 50, and Mike Kump takes game number one with a three-point change. A three-point shift those last two to get a one-point win. What a turn of events. Burger on him. I mean, he put 50 points on the board. That's that's no small feat in this particular sport. 50 points is solid. I think that's in the top like 5% of all competitors. And this league, especially in the past year, as you were mentioning earlier, has grown exponentially. I think uh, this time last year we had just a few hundred. Now we're in the few thousand. What is happening now that Tony Luce had the game one in his back pocket, just needed something inside the, the four-point circle at minimum to throw, force extra throws. Came out of it, threw low, lost by one, and now trying to force the issue in the middle is down five after three throws with that drop. It has to be going through Mike's head right now. And he has played the underdog role beautifully from a psychological warfare sort of standpoint. But now he is playing from a position of power here in game number two. Yeah, you can almost tell just in the in his uh, in, just in his face if you saw it just a little earlier, like the the shift, like he knows. Yeah. Wanted to make a little magic happen because they end up with. Nine out of that, I believe. Looks like it'll be. But will he even make up any ground? And it's definitely a bull. Good kill shot. One, six, four. He doesn't make up any ground. He loses a point even with the kill shot. Honestly, though, by missing a kill shot, only trailing back by one point, that's not bad. But now down six overall because of that drop. There we go. It's a double rotation, 15-foot line. A lot can happen from back here. But as many times as he said it on this broadcast, I mean, Mike Cump just needs to board five throws and you're probably going to win a world title. Mm -hmm. Two really good throws from Luce. One's definitely in the bowl. The other one may have caught a part of the five. That was a heck of a grouping from Mike Kump, but let's see if we can thread that needle. And he oh, did. Wow. Phenomenal shot. It's a spot big standing ovation from his competitor, Mike Kump, love watching that. Five, five, four, six, six, five. He turns a six-point deficit into just 
just a three-point deficit. Three-point separators. He has the gap. Cup is in the lead. Last two throws. This could be it for the world championship title if Cump can maintain that lead. But Luz is not going down without a fight. Comes in, he hit it. He hit it. Wow. A bullseye wins it for Cump. Five would force extra throws, anything outside of the middle circle. And Luce comes back to win it. And he hits a four. Gonna check those bowls. Might be how it's dangling. And they're checking the rules right now. Maybe for throw order. That knife. Is it just where the only the tip above that blue circle? Clarification on this one. The competitors still not aware. Drama unfolding to figure out who is a world champion. We'll see what happens right after this. The World Knife Throwing League is sponsored by Toro Knives. Outfit your throwing game by visiting WorldKnifeThrowingLeague.com to get a set of Toro Knives today. We're Bad Axe Throwing, an Urban Axe Throwing Club. We're here to show you an unforgettable experience. Don't take it from us. Take it from hundreds of thousands of customers and countless five-star reviews. Whether it's a corporate event, birthday party, bachelor or bachelorette party, heck, even just hanging out with friends. We're the go-to destination for adults who want to have fun. Our expert coaches will teach you how to throw an ax in no time. Be a bad ax. Book your event today. You can cut the tension part in the pun with a knife. clinching kill shot had already hit the upper right kill shot in his fourth throw. That means that that blue circle is locked. He needed to go for the left one because it was locked at just one point. And Mike Pump is the 2022 World Knife Throwing League Champion. All right, let's take a look at our championship replay brought to you by Toro Knives. You knew this was going to be an accurate showdown between these two elite throwers, and Mike Kump was up to the challenge in that first set. The narrowest of margins wins by just one point, but he got to 50 points. That has always been a huge part of the success in this tournament. Tony Luce was going to apply the pressure in the second one. They continue to pepper the bullseye, but when it mattered, that kill shot goes to the right, a bit of a technicality, but the rules are the rules, and Mike Kump, your winner. Wow, what drama at the end for Luce to step up and hit the shot he thought he needed but went to the wrong dot. So it ends up being 50-44 in the decisive one for Mike Kump. Unbelievable as everybody's trying to just sort of process what just happened. No animosity between the two competitors. And just a wild day that came down to a couple of drops, a couple of interesting strategies. A little tiny love of understanding the rules. That fourth throw was on the right side for Luce. And that means Mike Kump is a world champion. He's standing by with Rob Levins. Kump, the 2022 world champion knife thrower. Uh, Mike, give us a little insight of what happened there at the end. Uh... Yeah, so Rob, uh, the final two throws, I was up by three. We both hit a bullseye. Then Tony goes and hits a kill shot, but he had already apparently closed the right side kill shot, so 
I would have been uh, only up by one point at that, you know, at that point, I hit a four, I would have lost the round, but going back to the two spin, Tony didn't realize, and I'm not sure anybody in the re room realized that he had already closed out that kill shot. There was no way for me to like, for, like do a forfeit or like a step over the line or a foul or anything to make it right. I really wanted to make it right. I don't feel completely comfortable, but that's the way it goes sometimes. The, the match was that intense that everyone in the room sort of lost track of the rule, but that was the rule nonetheless. Uh, he did hit the kill shot, but it was Mark Zero. Uh, Mike, congratulations on the win. Although it's not the ideal way to win, you did have to throw pretty pure throughout day one. How long was your day one, and how did you feel after it? I, I was able to go through the A bracket day one. Uh, today, I was able to skate by in some matches where I was not performing well. Um, I mean, if anything, what better way to make me more the villain in throwing sports than to win on kind of a technicality? <laughs> well, I'm still going to say congratulations, Mike Kump, uh, our 2022 uh, knife throwing champion. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Mike Kump gets it done. Former U.S. Open champion in hatchet, now a world champion in knife throwing. For Rob Leverance, Evan Walters, and Mike Kump, I'm Will Haskett saying so long from Appleton, Wisconsin. Congratulations to Mike Kump, the 2022 world knife throwing champion.